All right. So this week we're going to look at reasons why libraries should get embedded in um, into the fabric of higher education. So we're going to look at a lot of different studies um, that will help illuminate trends in academic libraries, that will help um, give you a sense of student and faculty perceptions and usage of academic libraries. We're going to look at some of the stickier issues inherent in faculty librarian collaboration, a lot of power dynamics going on there and cultural issues. Um, we're going to look at the efficacy of one-shot instruction. A lot of librarians are questioning whether this is the best way to reach our students. And finally, we're going to look at the current state of learning objects in academic libraries. So, as we know, libraries are getting smaller and smaller pieces of the university's budget. Um, and I think one study I, that we're going to look at shows like a significant decline in the percentage of the university's budget that libraries are receiving. Um, and at the same time, um, the costs of journals and books are increasing way ahead of inflation. So their, our purchasing power is shrinking along with our budget shrinking, which is making our purchasing power decrease at a much quicker rate. Um, a lot of students and faculty are beginning to question the relevance of libraries in the current environment. And some even question the level of funding that the library gets. Like, why are we spending this much money on something we barely use? Um, and a lot of students and faculty, as you'll see, actually bypass the library completely in their research and regular daily workflow. So. We found a, there's a lot of interesting stuff to get out of the Ithaca study, and it's not all doom and gloom. But on the whole, respondents perceived less value from a lot of the functions of the library than they did in the previous cycle of the survey. Um, that's a huge problem. And, you know, the only thing that they saw that was better was the gateway function, which is not really what most librarians want to be seen as, that we're a gateway to information. We want to be seen, you know, a lot of librarians take very seriously the, the educational and instructional role, and we see that as something that proves our value as, as faculty members and as educators. And, you know, the fact is most faculty don't seem to think that we do have that. Um, you know, very, a small minority of respondents see the library as primarily responsible for teaching research skills to undergrads. And even in the humanities, only 50% of faculty think that librarians contribute significantly to student learning. And yet, less than 50% think that it's their responsibility to develop student research skills. So we've got this kind of disconnect. Well, I don't think librarians should be teaching it, but then again, I don't think I should be teaching it. Where do they get it? Interesting. I think a lot of times um, faculty are prone to forget that they actually had to learn to do research. I think we forget that sometimes too. Um, very few faculty use the library building, but they still do use the library. You know, we have very, I know at my university, we see very few faculty coming into the building, but we, but a lot of them are using our online databases. So here's an interesting, um, interesting graphic, we're not seen as supporters of faculty teaching. So how much you rely on the following sources of instructional support when introducing new pedagogies? Look, I mean, the library is a very small portion. Then again, they're not going to many places at all to get help with their teaching. I mean, that faculty do still see themselves as the ones who should be coming up with this stuff themselves and then they're going to their friends who also teach in these areas, they aren't thinking of the library as something that can support that. Um, we're not seen as having a key role in scholarly communication, and this is something that librarians have really um, built up services for. We have scholarly communications librarians, and yet in most cases, as you can see here, they don't see us as playing a role in helping to assess the impact of their work, helping to determine where to publish, um, 
making their research freely available online, which is something that a lot of libraries are really trying to focus on getting faculty work into the institutional repository. Our importance amongst faculty in most cases is decreasing, as you can see, other than in that depressing gateway function. Everything else is down um, from 2009. So that's a bit, a bit daunting to look at. Um, and our importance amongst faculty is, in general is decreasing, as you can see, because faculty have easy access to academic content online. The role librarians play at this institution is becoming much less important. You know, back in 2006, under 10% agreed with that. Now it's over 20%. Um, and also, the number has nearly doubled in the past three years in terms of faculty thinking that that colleges and universities should spend less money on library buildings and staff. <laughs> oh, you know, you read this and, and you must wonder, like, should I really get involved in this profession? <laughs> but I swear there it, there is a bright, bright future ahead of us. It just doesn't look like it when you read the Ithaca study. Um, when you look at the perceptions of library study from OCLC, you'll see that no one, none of the college students they looked at started their research on the library website. That doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't do research on the library website, but it wasn't their starting point. 52% um, of college students use some sort of online Ask an Expert website, um, which is not the library. Fewer actually use the library, which is really depressing. Um, and college students using the library website actually declined 4% in the, over the past um, five years, which is depressing given how much time libraries spend on web design. <laughs> so Project Information Literacy has published a variety of really interesting studies that illuminate um, faculty and student information behaviors. Um, I would highly recommend taking a look at their website and looking at some of their other studies if you're interested in information literacy. But from the study that you looked at this week, you saw that 8 out of 10 students rarely or never ask a librarian for help. So that's kind of funny when you look at the um, OCLC study, which found that half of the people of the students they looked at ask it, use an Ask an Expert website that isn't the library. So they're getting help, just not from us. Um, they see faculty as the go-to people for um, for help, which isn't surprising. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And they do, um, as Project Information Literacy shows, they do use library resources. It's just not the first place they're going to go. They start with Google, they start by getting kind of a broad overview there, and then they focus in on library research. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We might not be the first place they should go. Um, and then, you know, you're going to look at some interesting studies that um, look at trends in library public services. Martell found circulations down, references down, but visits to the library are up. And um, actually, my institution circ this year, circulation is up, even though um, even though our enrollment is actually flat, circulation's up we're, and reference is up, but we're very, we're a very unusual institution. But by and large, the trend has been both in public and academic libraries that, especially major research libraries, that reference has gone way, way down. Um, but people still do value library as place. You know, we keep hearing, oh, libraries aren't important as place, but visits to libraries on the whole in academia are up. And of course, use of our online collections has gone way, way, way up. And that, you know, just because they're not checking out books does not mean that they're not using our collections. The way our collections are used has changed over time. So using these traditional metrics of circulation may not tell the whole story. Um, in the article by ARP, and the other people who wrote that article, whose names I am not remembering right now, um, show, you know, we're so focused on building student information literacy, and yet we keep teaching these one-shots that don't really have enough impact on student information literacy. Um, you'll see it 
time and again that you know we we tend to teach at the pleasure of the faculty we wait until faculty contact us and ask us for help rather than going in and trying to do something that we know is going to make more of a difference in students lives I mean how much can we teach in a one-hour session one of my colleagues has this um, has this saying that she thinks faculty think that we dip students in the information tea we just steep them for an hour and then they're good to go it's sort of like um, dipping Achilles in the um, river sticks where everything but his heel was uh, immortal you know this this just doesn't work it doesn't work you teach somebody something for 50 minutes and it's never you know it's never emphasized again or assessed or taught again they're not going to get it they're only going to get a little benefit from that and honestly the only way that we're going to make any headway in this area is to really collaborate with faculty and departments to build something meaningful into the curriculum and uh, Melissa Bowles Terry Lisa Hinchliffe and Marinda um, Marinda Henley sorry <laughs> forgot her name for a second um, Hensley she, they created this great study of um, of the use of information literacy tutorials by students this is so interesting and it really helped influence my thinking about how about the need to make tutorials available at students points of need they found that yeah librarians are put creating all these great tutorials and dumping them on tutorials pages and expecting that students are going to find them and students don't find them but when they do discover them somebody shows them to them they use it in a class they think they're amazingly useful but they say I would never have found them here so thinking about you know if we put as much effort into placing our tutorials at students points of need as we do on creating the tutorials they would be significantly more useful to our students so the big challenge how do we become vital again to the academic enterprise I mean these this data is really really depressing and shows that we need to show our prove our value to faculty and students we need to make a case for why the library is important and how we can help them um, what support should we provide to, val to faculty that will actually make them think that we're valuable you know is scholarly communications the way to go should we really try to be research partners for them should it be through working with their students um, it, is it through collections I honestly don't know for sure and I think the answer is going to differ depending on the discipline and the institution um, how can we partner with faculty to improve student information literacy and become important to, really critical and important to student learning more than just coming in for a single session but really being woven into the curriculum how do we become part of the research workflow to make instructional content and then also live support available at people's points of need and how can we come, become more visible and accessible to students how can we become the go-to place for them how can we become the place that they the the place or the people that they think of when they need help so we'll be exploring all of this throughout the term and hopefully by the end you will feel much less depressed than you did with after reading the Ithaca study or at least after I did enjoy your readings this week